Hello and welcome back to another Farming Simulator Giants Editor tutorial and today we're going to be looking at textures both the actual foliage texture and the ground texture now I'm on my sample mod map here and I've got some grass put down on the map and obviously the grass ground texture is below that so what I'm going to do here hopefully is to demonstrate how to replace both the ground texture and the actual grass texture itself with one from a different map. The map I've actually chosen here is Thornton Farm. Um, a subscriber of mine has asked how he would go about taking the grass textures from this particular map and then implement, implementing them into a different map. Now I'm not entirely sure if the ground texture is different or the same as what I have on my sample mod map, but to be honest with you, I would probably recommend it's worth taking all of it from whatever map you are editing or removing it from or whatever else simply because you may find that the ground texture adds to the actual finished sort of altogether texture if you like you may find that by taking just the actual foliage texture it will look different if you like uh, not quite the same because the ground texture is what actually adds to the effect of the finished product if you like they both work together so if I actually look in my sample mud map here, you can see the grass texture and if I actually come over to an area that doesn't have any on it at all at the moment. So I will just put down the grass texture in its different stages. So I'll come down to my foliage layer painting section here and I will start with 5 and I will select my drain foliage paint mode. And I'm going to actually make my brush a little bit smaller there, like so. So I paint that down, you can see there, that is what that looks like at that growth stage. And if I choose uh, 4 and 5, that's what it looks like at that growth stage. And then 6, like so. Okay, so that's that gra grass texture, and obviously that ground texture. And if I go back into the actual Thornton Farm map here, if I do the same again in this particular map, so I'm going to choose grass and then choose five, select my train foliage paint mode again, and then paint that down. You can see the difference straight away there. And then I go four and five, and then obviously six to be fully grown. So what I'm going to do to start with is actually copy over just the grass texture itself so I can see if they match in with the ground texture or not to experiment a little bit. So what I need to do here is close both of these Giants Editor sessions down because I will need to allow the system to update with the new textures before I can then ever play around with them. So having those Giants Editor sessions open won't allow me to do that properly. There is a tab which I'll show you in Giants Editor to reload all textures but I've never found that it actually works. I've always had to exit out of the Giant Set session and then restart it to load in the new textures that I've applied. So in my, or in the Thornton Farm map here, I'm going to go in Map, and then I've got Textures, Foliage, and in here I've got my Grass Diffuse, and if I open that in Paint.net, that's what it looks like. And in the sample mod map that I have here, I'm going to go into Map Folder, and then into Foliage, and you have Grass Diffuse, there and that's what that looks like in paint.net so what I'm going to do here is just basically copy this across and then overwrite that one like so so what I'm going to do now is actually restart the Giants editor session for the sample mod map and just give that a second to open up and then we'll paint down the grass textures and see what they look like in their different growth stages and see if it actually looks the same as what it is on Thornton Farm. My guess would be not, but we'll see what happens. So again, I'm going to select grass, select my train foliage paint mode, and we'll go five, and we'll put that down on the map like so. And you can see straight away, there is a massive difference there from what we had on Thornton Farm. It doesn't look anything like what it was painting it down like in Thornton Farm. And again, with that particular channel, and if I then go to six yeah it, it just doesn't look right doesn't match in at all 
So now what I'm going to do is close down the giant surface session again. And what I need to do now is copy over the actual ground textures. And for this, I found that they, the one I require, the ones I require would be under texture terrain. So if I go into there, I've got grass diffuse, grass distance diffuse, and grass normal. So what I need to do is highlight all three of those, copy them, come back over into my sample mod map here, and then I'm going to go into textures, terrain, and paste them in, and then basically click on the um, tab down here so that it copies all of them in, and then replaces them like so. Okay, so now I'm going to go back into the map via giant editor and give that a second to load again. Okay, so now we're back into the map again and you can see the ground texture has changed quite dramatically here. And this is what we have obviously for our grass textures when they're fully grown. So now we're going to have a look and see what it looks like when I paint down the different texture channels. So I'm going to again go into my Foes layer, choose grass, start with five, select my train foes paint mode again, and then paint it down. And it still doesn't look quite right, but when you zoom in, it does tend to give the effect that it was on the Thornton Farm map. So we'll choose four and five and go again. So it's kind of similar, but there is still a little bit of a difference there. And then obviously six would be our fully grown. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to give an area of fully grown and then I'm going to change that texture to something in the middle of a lower growth stage like so. And that looks a little bit better actually. So you have to play, play around with it a little bit. I think where I was experimenting with the um, down pop-ups <laughs> um, on Thornton Farm, if I actually go back into that one I show you, I was actually playing around with the textures in an area that had a lot of grass on it already in its maximum growth stage, so sometimes they will not look quite right because of the way that you're putting it down or the perhaps the actual place that you're putting it down onto. So if I come back over to here again and have a look at this. And then if I go down to my bows layer here, choose, oops, wrong one, uh, grass, and we'll go five, texture foes paint mode and paint it down. So if I now compare that to what I have on the sample mod map, you can see it actually looks the same. So I'll just zoom out a little bit on this one. Um, like so. And then we'll just compare the two. Maybe a different angle. It's very difficult sometimes to get it to look exactly the same because of the angle that you have the camera at and different lighting effects on the map. But I think that actually looks very similar on both maps now yeah so there you go and if i actually paint this down um, on the sample mod map perhaps choose four and five so we've got a bit of a the next growth stage if you like so we'll try that one and see what that looks like and then i will do the same on thornton farm oh, i've already done it so that's why it had a slight difference there because i was actually looking at a different growth stage there. So now if we compare the two, I think they look pretty much identical there. So yeah, um, it's a little bit of playing around, but um, as I said before, the ground textures and the actual grass textures, or if you were working with perhaps um, wheat or barley or something like that, you need to copy over really the ground textures as well as the actual texture itself in this particular case obviously grass to get the full effect to show up as you intended to be so that's how you basically go about copying over grass textures in this case from the Thornton Farm map in this demonstration but whatever map you are playing around with 
and then import them into a different map. Um, what I will just show you very quickly is in the giants, uh, sorry, in um, the map on 3D itself. So again, if I close these down, it may be worth having a look in the actual map i 3 d So if I open the one for the sample mod map here and do a search for grass, and I'm just basically going to come down to the actual foliage layer itself, like so. And if we look in here, you can see there's your distance map IDs, the distance map unit sizes, the minimum distance color, sorry, missed more pop-ups, minimum distance color difference, um, atlas size, and so on and so on and so on. So if I now actually open the one for Thornton Farm here, and I do the same search again, like so, it might be worth just having a look at these and just double checking that they are the same for both maps. Because if I look at the min, min distance color difference there and compare that to what it is on the sample mod map, just to see if there is actually a difference. In this particular case, there isn't. So have a look at the atlas size. And again, no difference. So we'll have a look at the Atlas offset. And again, no difference. So that's good. And we've got the num block per unit. I would imagine that's going to be the same. Oh no, see, there's a difference right away there. So we've got num blocks per unit, and this is on the Thornton Farm map, and that's set to 1.6. On my sample mod map, is actually set to 1. So you may need to change that to 1.6 on the map that you're actually bringing the grass textures or whatever textures they are, again in this case grass, to 1.6 to get the full effect of the actual textures that you're bringing into the map that you're editing. So we've got width, so we'll just double check that to see what that is. Again, so the width is slightly different. Height looks about the same. Text chords look the same. Then we've got width variants. So we'll just have a look at those. So that looks the same. Then we've got height variants. That looks the same. Horizontal position variants the same. Num states for growth stage is probably going to be very similar. Yes. And then the block shape ID will be again the same. So there will be possibly some changes that you will need to make. Specifically in this case, num blocks per unit was 1.6 on Thornton Farm. So if I actually change that now on the sample mod map here, if I can actually find it. It's somewhere in amongst all of this. <laughs> um, where did I see? There it is. So if I actually change that to 1.6, and this is on my sample mod map that I'm bringing the grass textures over to. So again, if I save that, and I will then close all of these down, and then open up the sample mod map again, and we'll see what difference that's made to the actual grass textures on the map. I would imagine they're going to be fuller in their, the way that they're painted down the map. So again, we'll find an area where there, are, there is no grass. And then I will choose my grass texture again. And we'll go 5. Choose my train forage paint mode again. And put it down. Yes. Much more dense in that area. So yeah, that's made a big difference to the way that looks on the map itself. And if I then choose four and five, like so, and then go six, and basically cover that around the outside of it, 
like so. Yeah, absolutely. That's what's the that was the big biggest difference there between the Thornton Farm map and my sample mod map here. The denseness of the actual texture itself. So by changing that num block um, sized from one to one point six has given me a much denser grass texture, and that's the difference there, uh, which is why it didn't look quite the same. So it will be definitely worth looking in the map i 3D that you're taking this particular grass texture from, if it is indeed grass that you're working with, and just see that the uh, attributes in the grass foliage channel are the same for the map that you're taking it from to the map that you're going to be bringing it into because that can make all the difference just there like that. Um, your block shape ID may be slightly different depending on the map and some other bits and pieces but um, generally I would say to just copy what you have in those attributes from the map you're taking the texture from and bringing it over into the map that you're going to be editing. So just changing those attributes in the map by 3D can make a massive difference to how the actual texture looks on the map that you're actually editing. So there we go. So grass textures, how to take them from Thornton Farm in this case and bring them into a sample mod map or, and this would obviously apply for any map that you are editing if you wish to do that. Um, and then changing certain attributes in the map by 3D to give you the same, in this case, denseness of texture to give you an exact replica, if you like, exact match to what it was on the Thornton Farm again in this particular case. So yeah, there you go. Quick video just to show you how to do that and how to set up these textures, the ground textures, as well as the actual foliage textures themselves. So I hope that was of some help to you. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I will catch you on the next one.